Hi, Ninja Nerds. In this video, we're going to talk about acetaminophen, or more commonly referred to as Tylenol. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Let's get into it. Acetaminophen, also known as Tylenol, is a medication that we are typically going to be giving our patients. So commonly referred to as Tylenol, but the active ingredient is acetaminophen, and it's given for two types of indications. We have analgesic, which we know is another word for treating pain, and we have an antipyretic, which is for fever, right? So we're going to be giving this medication primarily to treat pain or to treat a fever. The reason we do this is we have a mechanism of action, which is to inhibit the production of the prostaglandins in the central nervous system. And you're probably thinking, well, what are prostaglandins? Like, what, what do those do? Why are we giving this to a patient? So prostaglandins are things that play a role in our body to help transmit pain and fever response. Okay. What does that mean? Our body is sending signals saying, I have pain, I have a fever, and we're going to be getting all these types of symptoms going on, and we can give Tylenol to help inhibit this area, this reaction of a prostaglandin, so we can stop producing either the pain or the fever, okay? And then we treat the source. We treat the source of the pain or the fever in some other way. So if the person's having a fever because of an infection, they would get secondary antibiotics, and they're, if they're having pain from something else, maybe they are need their appendix removed, we're gonna help with that as well. So prostaglandins transmit the pain and fever response, so if we're inhibiting that, we're gonna cut off this response and then we're not gonna have as much pain or we're not gonna have a fever. Tylenol is typically used as an anti, or as a, an alternative to NSAIDs, okay? And what are NSAIDs? NSAIDs are a type of pain medication that we can give that acts on the bleeding cascade, right? And it can help thin the blood. We're gonna look at Tylenol to give to somebody if they have some type of bleeding disorder. So let's think about that real quick, because in the NCLEX they like to ask questions about certain types of patients with certain disorders, right? So right here we have a little stomach, and someone who has a bleeding disorder or any type of irritation in the stomach, they can have either peptic or gastric ulcers. So you wanna think about giving Tylenol to a patient who has ulcers, okay, that's a good thing. And you wanna think about giving it to somebody who has some type of genetic or hereditary bleeding disorder. And we're doing that because remember, Tylenol disorder. Let's finish writing that and then I'll explain. We want to remember this is good. These are things we want to give Tylenol to because they don't act on any type of bleeding. Tylenol doesn't act on any type of bleeding issue. Remember, it's only given for pain or fever as an alternative to an NSAID. Before we administer the medication to our patient, we want to think about some contraindications that we don't want to be giving Tylenol too. So we said that Tylenol is typically given for patients that have some type of bleeding issue so that we can not give them an NSAID or something that's going to help trigger the bleeding. However, with Tylenol, there are a couple things we want to keep in mind or just you know keep our eye on with their history. The first thing is here is any type of hepatic or renal disease. A patient that has something, an issue with their kidney or an issue with their liver, you want to keep an eye on it. Typically with with certain doctors, they're just going to want to maybe check some labs prior to giving Tylenol, okay, or anything else um, that can indicate that maybe we shouldn't be giving them Tylenol. Another thing is hypersensitivity. If they've had Tylenol before and they have any type of like allergy or issue with acetaminophen as the active ingredient, let's try not to give them this medication, right? Uh, you want to also think about alcohol abuse. Why alcohol abuse? Remember. What happens with, with alcohol? Where does it get processed through the body? Where does it get filtered? Right here, the liver. So if they have a history of alcohol abuse or they have some other problems going on with the kidney and the, the liver, you wanna you know, think if they have a long-standing abuse with alcohol, they probably have some type of kidney or renal disease. So we wanna make sure that we're looking at this as well. And the last thing is warfarin. And I know before I said that if someone has some type of bleeding disorder, we may want to look into giving them Tylenol. However, warfarin is one medication you just want to keep an eye on and why. That's because when you give someone warf or give someone Tylenol that's on warfarin, it actually can increase bleeding. 
Okay, and why is that? Why does warfarin increase bleeding? Can you think of like why that happens? What is the one test that we test for warfarin? It's our INR. So you wanna make sure that you're monitoring the INR because you're gonna be increasing, possibly increasing bleeding with warfarin and that has to do with Tylenol slowing the metabolism of warfarin so it's gonna last longer in the body. So when you have a longer lasting medication in the body and you're still taking it as you normally do, you may all of a sudden increase your bleeding. So just keep an eye on that. Patients on warfarin, just make sure you ask the doc, hey, is this okay, are you okay with this? So we have all of these contraindications that maybe we don't wanna give a patient this medication, okay? But when we do go to administer this medication, there are different ways that the medication will interact in the body and different times, okay? So let's think about this really quickly. We have IV, which is what? Intravenous. We have PO, which is oral, and then we have PR. Some of you may not know what this abbreviation is. What is the abbreviation for PR, do you know? It's rectal, okay? So three different ways we can give this medication, and we wanna think about the mechanism or the time of the onset, right? The onset is 15 to 30 minutes, right? So someone is having some type of fever or pain, you're not going to get any relief at least until the 15, probably 30, 30 minute mark. When I give Tylenol to my patients, I typically like to tell them that it's going to be 30 minutes, okay, until they maybe feel some pain relief. What about PO? What is PO again? That's oral. How fast is someone going to get some relief from a pain or a fever in the oral category when you give it to them through a pill or a capsule? A little longer, right? IV is going to be fast. This one's going to be 30 to 45 minutes. And we have the last one here, rectal. If you're going to be giving somebody a suppository, how long is that going to take? It's going to take longer than these two, right? So this one's going to be up to an hour until we get some relief. Okay, so we are giving them a medication. We know how long it's probably going to take till they get some relief. There is a couple of things that we need to consider especially with adults and with people that have an alcohol abuse history or an alcoholic. You wanna look at their amount that they're gonna be taking daily. So the recommended amount for adults is four grams daily, okay? But for alcoholics, if they have some type of history, you're only gonna do two grams daily, okay? And that again, remember we talked about it up here, has to do with someone who has a history of abuse probably has some type of liver or kidney disease, more than likely a liver issue. Okay, so don't exceed four grams daily if you're an adult or two grams daily if you have a history of alcohol abuse. What are some side effects then of Tylenol? Today we're just gonna talk about the more typical side effects of Tylenol. So we have a little guy right here and he is having, we have a big X over the head, so they are probably gonna have a headache, which you would think, aren't you gonna give Tylenol? for someone to treat headache, but some people do actually get a refurbance common side effect of a headache. Sweating, so you wanna keep an eye on this, and these can be also early indicators of toxicity. Maybe they've had too much, because remember we wanna be at that four grams daily. What else? We have some nausea or vomiting, okay? We have a rash. We have abdominal pain. And the abdominal pain could also be here in the right upper quadrant. Let's keep that in mind for a little later. And the last is dark urine. Right? And this should start ringing some bells for you, especially the abdominal pain that more than likely will be in the upper right, right quadrant and the dark urine, because what organ is typically the right upper quadrant pain? What does the NCLEX like to ask on there? We talked about it earlier, it's the liver, so remember that, okay? So we're looking at possibly some toxicity there. So these are the early side effects, right? And then all of a sudden, maybe the patient is having some more side effects. They're having something more serious, which is a toxicity. They're taking too much Tylenol. They're having some issues. We know that that can also lead to possibly coma, death, right? Those are like the two big things. And then any type of kidney issue, okay? A longstanding kidney or liver issue. So keep that in mind, okay? So what are some interventions that we want to make sure that when we're giving someone Tylenol, we aren't getting to that toxic level? What are some of the things we're going to be looking at? First thing is just going to be looking at vital signs. Remember, in our nursing interventions, we're always reassessing the patient. So the patient was given Tylenol for pain or given Tylenol for 
a fever, we're always going to reassess. So I'm going to put that down here because that's one of the things we're going to keep doing over and over. But we're also going to be checking the other vital signs, right? We're not going to just check their temp to see if it came down or just check their pain to see if it's getting better. We're also going to check, is their heart rate increasing? Is their blood pressure dropping? Are their lungs, lung sounds junky? And that all has to do with typically pain or fever comes secondary to something else that's going on, an infection somewhere. So we want to make sure that we're not missing it. Maybe their x-ray yesterday when they first came in looked nice and clear, and then all of a sudden today it's starting to look a little more cloudy because maybe they are developing a pneumonia and this was our early sign. So we want to make sure we're always assessing our patient and reassessing to making sure that the medication was working. What's well, another thing we're going to be making sure we ask? Do they have any history of any type of reaction? Okay, we want to make sure we're checking their history. Do they have any history of a reaction to Tylenol? Do they have any of that history we talked about earlier? Any type of kidney, liver problems? What else are we going to be looking at? We want to make sure that with nursing interventions, if we think something's going on, we can check blood work or tell the doc and they're going to order blood work. We're going to be looking here at the AST and the ALT. Okay, what are those? We're going to be looking at our liver enzymes. We can sure our liver looks okay. When we move into adults and peds, we also want to keep in mind and telling our patients that if you're having a fever for subsequent days or you're taking uh, Tylenol for a pain medication, you want to make sure you're not using it too many days in a row. For adults, that's going to be 10 days. If they've used Tylenol for 10 days in a row, even though they're staying right at that four grams daily, that's going to be an issue. You want to make sure that you're telling them to seek help and you want to make sure that you're telling them to tell a doctor, tell the PCP you've been taking Tylenol for 10 days. What about pediatrics? Pediatrics is three to five. If they're taking it for anywhere up to three to five days, they should be seeing their pediatrician. So we've been re reassessing their vitals, we're making sure their blood work looks good, they maybe have been taking it for too long, and God forbid we get into an overdose situation or a toxicity that we need to reverse. What are we gonna do? We're gonna give the antidote. Okay, so keep that in mind. This is another NCLEX nursing intervention that we can do with Tylenol. And what is the antidote? Do you know? Remember, the medication we're giving is acetaminophen. So the antidote is ACE, Ty, Cysteine. Okay, so I always remember it as acetaminophen and Tylenol and then Cysteine. So remember that the antidote is acetylcysteine, and that's the medication that we're going to talk about now, God forbid our patient overdose accidentally or on purpose. Unfortunately, our patient may have overdosed either intentionally or accidentally, and there are some things as a nurse you need to know or find out if you can, either from the patient or family or friends that have brought the patient in. The first thing we want to just figure out is how much did they take? of the Tylenol and how long ago? How long has it been? Okay. So those are the first two things we're gonna ask. Did the, how much did the patient take? Do you approximately know? And then how long ago was it? And that, that is gonna help us figure out, do we need to just keep assessing them because we're maybe out of this initial window or we took so much that we're gonna be looking at possibly them slipping into a coma or just being very lethargic and altered. So we're gonna be given, again, our antidote, right? If they are able to sit up and drink, you're going to give them the acetylcysteine, typically in juice. You can mix it or water if they're able to drink. Okay. So fantastic. You're going to mix all this in here and they're going to drink. Okay. And you want to make sure you tell the patient Drink it at a nice, comfortable pace. Don't try to chug it because I don't want you throwing up, but I, I also want you to get this into your body. So you want to make sure that they are drinking this and you're keeping an eye on them. So what are some things you're going to do? You're going to keep reassessing. Two, every, you know, this is going to be longer than two to four hours, but immediately in the two to four hours after they have ingested, we're going to be looking for things like bradycardia, sweating, vomiting or nausea and I always tell my patient if you're feeling nauseous let me know I can give you medications for that I can give you an anti-nausea medication 
And we're gonna keep reassessing vital signs, keep an eye on them, maybe keep drawing blood work if the patient or if the doc wants that. Up to seven days, a patient can have some liver issues or liver problems. And what are some of those issues? So let's think about it. If the liver is having issues eliminating or getting rid, there may be a buildup of what's this, what's the one thing that the liver helps get rid of in the body, you know? Bilirubin, right? So if bilirubin is building up or increasing in the body, what are we gonna have? We're gonna have jaundice, okay. We have some darker urine. Okay, what else is going on? They're gonna have altered labs, their ALT and their AST, probably. Right, so we wanna keep an eye on our patient. So when they take an overdose or too much acetaminophen, you wanna be giving them the antidote acetylcysteine in our juice or water, you can mix it, and you wanna keep re uh, revitalizing or reassessing your patient, keeping an eye on them, monitoring them. That's what we were talking about, those nursing interventions. But God forbid our patient came in and maybe took it a little longer prior, and now they're not really reacting. They're kind of unconscious, or maybe they have an altered mental status. You know, you're trying to give them a cup and they can barely hold it up. They're, you know, not really able to put their lips on a straw or anything. You wanna maybe move into a gastric, gastric lavage. Now this is a nursing intervention that's not commonly used anymore. Uh, I haven't seen it used in my experience, but this is something that we can do. The reason we do a gastric lavage is we're either gonna insert this patient for this drawing has an OG. You can put an OG tube in, an oral gastric tube, or you can put a nasal gastric, an NG tube in. The whole idea is to put that tube in through the oral and nasal cavity down into the stomach, okay? Insert it so that we can either take out as much as we can, pump out as much, suck out as much as we want, and then put in activated charcoal, right? We wanna put this activated charcoal in. And you're probably thinking, why can't we put the acetylcysteine, that's the antidote in? The patient already has a stomach full of Tylenol. We're gonna try to get out as much as we can. Activated charcoal is gonna inhibit any absorption. Which is great. So if you're inhibiting the absorption of the rest of the Tylenol, it's just gonna ingest through. Patient might also get very nauseous from this. So that's why we put in either an NG and OG because as they get nauseated and as they start putting this activated charcoal, you can wait about a certain amount of time and then start taking it out, okay? Hooking it up to suction and taking it out. So the activated charcoal goes in and inhibits all of that absorption. Great, wonderful. The reason then we can't give the acetylcysteine is because now this activated charcoal, if you put this in after you've put activated charcoal to help stop absorption, acetylcysteine is also inhibited because activated charcoal also does that. And there isn't a way to get, they don't like this going through NG or OG tubes. So just keep that in mind. But gastric lavage is the NCLEX thing you wanna be looking at. If the patient comes in and somewhere in that question it says they have an altered mental status, they're, they're acting confused, you know, or they're in a coma or non-responsive. You wanna look for that answer that's possibly picking gastric lavage because that's what they're hinting at. Patient's not gonna be able to drink out of a straw if they're acting altered or they're confused. So keep that in mind. All right, engineers. nerds, in this video we talked about acetaminophen. I hope it made sense and I hope you liked it. As always, until next time. Mm -hmm.